the first time I learned uh, the Tarot, um, I sat with an Indian man who passed for a mystic um, for five hours straight. And we went through the entire thing. And after the five hours, I went back and trained 40 Indian men to read the Tarot. <laughs> well, it wasn't quite that simple, but I mean, I did, I did get the Indian mystic to come in and help, help me a little bit. Okay, but um, the, the first thing to say about the Tarot is that there is nothing mystic about it. Okay. In the wooey woo sense, there's nothing mystic about the Tarot. The Tarot is a methodology to uh, release things in your unconscious that maybe you're not hearing at the moment. And um, so there's a couple of caveats at the beginning of this. One is that um, remember that no approach to life is good or bad except in the context of the moment. So the, a tarot reading, even if, you, even if you have a bad tarot reading, it's only about this moment. And if anything, it's giving you a warning about something. If you respond to a card or the way the card is presented by the reader or by yourself, if you're reading for yourself, and that's basically what they're saying to do is to read for yourself. Um, if you get a, a card that you think is a negative card, then it's important to know that because that's something that your psyche is telling you is negative, but it doesn't mean you can't change it tomorrow, okay? You should pay attention to it, surely, but it doesn't, it's not predicting the future. It's only saying, Here's some things that maybe you didn't know in your psyche, and yes, they are negative, but you can change them tomorrow, or you can start to change them tomorrow. And, you know, it might be something very painful, um, and uh, you just, you have the chance to change everything, okay? And so, um, Remember that everything a reading is about is how things are now. Everything can be changed. If something negative is dredged up from the unconscious, knowledge of it allows you to change the situation. Now, I want to give you a special caveat mTOR. This is not something to be taken lightly. Okay. Um, James Michener, the famous novelist, um, used to do some sort of divination. I don't know, I don't remember whether it was Tarot or not, but he used to go to county fairs, and every year he'd go to the county fair in whatever community he was in, and he would set up a little tent, and he would do readings. And he did that for decades, a couple of decades. And it was just a fun thing to do and people could come in and say, wow, they had a tarot reading or whatever it was. I don't remember that it was tarot, but it's talked about in one of his biographies. Um, and he did that right up until the day that a young man came in to him and he did give him a negative reading. And this kid, got up from the reading and he was so upset about it that he went out and was in a traffic accident within an hour and, um, and was killed. And, and so when that happened, James Michener sort of gave up on readings because uh, it's non-trivial. And, you know, we've talked in this group in terms of Jungian psychology, how talking about these archetypal factors can dredge things up in your own psyche. And then if, you know, if they're bouncing around in your psyche, they can cause you to be distracted or uh, cause other problems. I mean, as we've talked about in my case, it 
caused me to write a novel, <laughs> pornographic novel. <laughs> and, you know, and, and that was based on visioning that happened over an eight month period. So it was non trivial. And, um, and so the tarot is like that. It's, we're talking about archetypal energies. And when you kick them up in the psyche, um, you have to know that they can have consequences. And so I think it's a, it's a good idea um, if you're going to give a reading to someone to give them these caveats at the beginning about remember everything can be changed, this is only about now, and so on, so that they understand. And also to talk about synchronicity, because synchronicity is a key part of tarot readings. It's why tarot readings work, um, because all of us have psychic sore spots okay, that we don't, aren't conscious of. The night before last, Debbie and I were watching the movie Witness uh, because it just happened to come on TV, notwithstanding what we talked about before. But all of a sudden, and it may happen again here, all of a sudden it came to the scene of the barn raising. And all these men were coming together. And they were building a barn in a day and obviously you see it's a very sore, soft spot, spot for me and the reason is that my great grandfather was a Pennsylvania Dutchman just like those guys okay he was an Amish uh, man and we uh, we used to have a portrait of him in his hat in his full gear and my sister in her infinite wisdom say, oh, I don't want this old picture. She gave it away or something to somebody. And if I'd known she was gonna do that, I would have strangled her, but any, anyway, she gave it away. And, and so when that barn raising scene came up, it dredged up in me all those connections, the connections with my great-grandfather, connection with my sister, connection with that incident of her giving away his portrait. And uh, it was, you know, and, and so those sorts of things can happen to you all the time. And so when you talk about archetypal things and, and uh, the tarot is just full of archetype. Okay, so everything you're talking about is somewhat archetypal and very normal for what happens in your life and so if um, if you're not care if you're careless about it it can um, be an issue now remember the story I told you about flipping a coin and how you can flip a coin to get an answer from your unconscious and you know, if the, if the side comes up that isn't the one that you wanted, you can say best two out of three. But, but actually, when you say best two out of three, it's already given you the answer because it's telling you that you wanted the other answer. Okay, it's telling you that. Okay, the Tarot works in exactly the same way, only with huge technicolor. Okay, in huge... Um, huge areas of your psyche. It's not just a yes-no question. It's, you know, the 78 degrees of wisdom and and they all combine differently and there's no tarot reading that's the same. And chime in, Bill, if you have any doubts. Okay, I'm just giving my homily at the moment. Oh, no, no. I'm okay. Just, I'm, just, I'm drifting all right. in and out with the, with the images you're writing out for. Okay, so, um, so anyway, my point is that a tarot reading is a living being, okay? Just as Dr. Jung was talking about 
there are living images in the psyche and they aren't your ego persona they are other things and so when you do a tarot reading it is a living being it can be Frankenstein in fact okay and so I'm gonna use that metaphor here as I explain to you how this works um, because it it requires multiple levels of psychological awareness and in order to get you started I'm going to talk about three levels and you will have to find the other levels for the rest of your life and there, and there are many but first in this packet of information that I'm providing to the group and which I will put on the video uh, I'm talking about the three levels so, so the first level is the skeleton and so it really is helpful to understand how calculus works do you know how ca what calculus is Calcul I know you know but do you know do you know Mine is four, three. I, 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 I defined it at one at one point in the group but anyway calculus is a description of a curved line in hyperspace okay and the reason it's hyperspace is there are multi dimensions and so a very simple calculus problem is if you if we come into this room and Bill has a hundred apples and you have a hundred oranges and Kelly has a hundred bunches of grapes and John has a hundred bun uh, bananas and I have a hundred pears and we don't really choose to um, eat all one thing all the time. So we'd like to have a trade, trade off among one another to get the optimum number of each fruit for our needs, right? And I mean, you could do this with 10, but each, each fruit is a dimension, okay? A and, dimension. It's a dimension. So if, if you have two, if it's only apples and oranges, then you can do a traditional L square, L graph. And you can say, okay, there's apples on this dimension, there are oranges on this dimension, and uh, Kelly and Des will trade off this many apples and oranges between them. Okay, and you can, you can graph that. Okay. And then if you add, um, bananas or whatever okay now you have three dimensions so now you're in three-dimensional space but after you're finished with three-dimensional space f for the other two fruits you don't have a dimension for that and so that's what calculus does calculus is a way for uh, computers to crunch numbers to decide how many of each fruit each one of you will select based on preferences that you would put down somehow. Is that a fair description? Okay. All right. Just mathematical divination. Well, no, I, well, it's not a mathematical divination, but it's to help you understand multidimensionality, okay? And the fact that a tarot reading is a multidimensional event. Okay, it's, it's in many, many different dimensions. And so what I'm presenting here is um, first the skeleton, okay, which is I'm going to, get, going to talk about the dimensions and what those dimensions are. Then, um, then I'm going to put flesh and blood about on it, which is we're going to talk about what each of the car, what what a reading is about and what each of the cards looks like and what it means and then the third dimension is an actual reading and that's when you have Frankenstein on the table okay and now no really because now once you know what the skeleton is and now and once you know what the flesh and bo bones is then you have to put put life into it and because if you learn the skeleton and the flesh and bones, then you have to forget them, okay? And you have to just read, 
And so this is where my boast comes in, that I can go into a theater with a thousand people present. And as long as they give me the benefit of the doubt that the Tarot does something, and I, and I acknowledge that it's not mystical, okay, every person in the room, I can throw the cards across the stage and read them off the stage without having any special layout. And everybody in the room will think I did a reading for them. Every single person. Every single person will hear a different reading. All right, so the skeleton is this dimensionality, which I talked about. The flesh and bones is what the cards mean. And this is where we were talking about different decks and so on, John, where, um, you know, although the general idea of cards is the same, mostly, I mean, sometimes they're in slightly different order, but although the general idea is the same, they um, have many meanings, okay? And so tonight or next week when we get to the meanings, you'll see I've put in just a few just to get you started on things that you can remember to trip your memory as you're giving a, me a reading. But in this book, and this, is, this book, which I have called 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollock. Okay, so Rachel did a basic training in this book, which is substantially like the training I had in India. Okay, very similar. And so I actually like that book the best as a way to inform you. Um, and she has like five to seven pages on every card. Okay, <laughs> and, and so I don't propose in this group to go into every meaning, okay? As we open up the cards, we'll talk about what these things mean to all of us because maybe you'll help trigger something in me that I'll remember, but, um, that I'll remember when I'm doing a reading, okay, and maybe I'll say some things that you'll remember when you're doing a reading. Um, but the idea is I'm just going to give the barest of bare bones descriptions just so you can remember, oh yeah, what's this card about kind of thing, right? And then from that, you, your own experiences will tell you how to talk about them in the context of this specific reading that you're doing. Now there are a couple of, there, there are hundreds of tarot books. Everybody and his brother and sister, or her, her brother and sister, because it's mostly, mostly women who do tarot, <laughs> because, because it requires, it requires int intuition, right? And so, uh, has written a tarot book. And, but here's one that's interesting. This is Tarot Psycho Psychology by Robert Wang, and it's a handbook for the Jungian Tarot. And so I'll pass this around, handbook of the Jungian Tarot, and I'll pass this around, and what you'll see is that the, these, this is a different deck of cards that it's describing. And so I'll leave it up to you to decide whether you want to contact Amazon and try to get that deck of cards. And then, pardon? Oh, no, that's just interesting to Right. And then there's another one which is interesting, which is called Tarot and Individuation. And the, the subtitle is Correspondences with the, Al with the Kabbalah and Alchemy by Irene Gad. So again, we're talking about the Tarot as being a way into individuation. Okay. Just as last week we were talking about the... About the um, him of the Pearl. By the way, that was very popular. I, I got some interesting feedback from our friends out here. And so that, that worked out. So anyway, Tarot and Individuation. I actually haven't read this book because <laughs> it's a little bit too heavy for my taste. <laughs> It's a doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> it is a good doorstop. But in any case, um, you can use your own taste. I, my recommendable book 
is 78 Degrees of Wisdom by Rachel Pollack. And um, there, actually, there's two versions of this on, on Amazon. One is it separates the minor arcana and the major arcana. But oh, by the way, it, she's saying the same thing in the in the three. I have all, I have them all, and so what she did was she updated. She first wrote the two books, the minor and the majors, separately, and then she did the seventy-eight degrees. And um, so this is the summation of the other two. So you don't need the other two. So this stands for seventy-eight cards. 78 cards. Okay, so here's, here's a secret knowledge.